Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Durham, I think I may have given you a lecture in medical school. I think you may have. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. You may recall it was on diarrhea and hepatitis. I was very <laughs> famous on those lectures. So, uh, there will be a quiz as to hepatitis A and how it's transmitted, but uh, we'll do that off the record. Thank you very much. And it's incredibly gratifying to me to see you and how, how your career has, has gone. So let me say that. Thank you very much. Let me echo uh, Senator Thune's endorsement of the bill that we have um, uh, introduced as regards uh, telehealth, telemental health. And uh, Mr. Chair, without, um, I'd like to submit two letters which support this um, uh, legislation that we're putting forward with Senator Thune, as he mentioned, but also Senator Smith and Cardin. And I've lost the list, but it's a very, oh, um, uh, and Smith. Uh, and so uh, this letter is from the um, American Telemedicine Association, and this is a group of folks all with the Health Innovation Alliance of the American Telemedicine. With, with, without objection, so ordered Senator Cassidy and Senator Crapo and I will be working very closely with you and the coalition on it. I think it's a very important idea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Betlock, good to see you, man. Sir Cassie, good to see you, sir. Your hair's a little longer. I mean, it is. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, several questions for you. You and I both know, in fact, we all know, dual eligibles are just a terrible mess. Um, very expensive to care for with terrible outcomes. We're spending incredible amounts of money to get terrible outcomes. It is the worst of all. Now, SAMHSA uh, puts a lot of grants out there in order to address the mentally ill, the issues of the mentally ill, as well as those who have substance abuse. Uh, and yet, there seems to be poor coordination with Medicaid. You've got experience. Um, can you give some ideas as to how we could better coordinate those programs? Sure, Senator Cassie, that's an incredibly important question. In Arizona, roughly 40% of the population of individuals with serious mental illness are dual eligible members. It actually leads to incredible fragmentation, as you described. When I first became the Medicaid director, if you were an individual with serious mental illness, you had a plan for physical health for Medicaid, a plan for behavioral health for Medicaid, Medicare fee-for-service, Medicare Part D. You had four different organizations that were potentially draw involved in paying for your services. None of them coordinated. As you said, it's led to just terrible results. On average, an individual with serious mental illness dies 25 years younger than peers, and oftentimes it's from untreated chronic diseases. And so in Arizona, it all comes back to the system design issue. Who's accountable in this? And it's very challenging with dual eligible members. But we created and built off some of the federal regulations that exist that said the managed care organization that was responsible for providing services for individuals with serious mental illness not only had to deliver Medicaid services, Arizona Medicaid program is the third largest housing authority. So there were rental subsidies that were flowing through the Medicaid program. Uh, employment support services. Very importantly, the plan had to be a dual special needs plan, which meant that it offered the Medicare services, which meant it was then accountable for delivering Medicare services to that population. So let me stop you. Yes. Great ideas, aligning incentives, appointing right. authority, everything that checks the box in terms of what were your outcomes? Were you able to improve outcomes for the duals? Yes. In, in the the independent third party study that was done by Mercer, we saw an increase in terms of all the HEDA scores for ambulatory and chronic management and an increase in all of the CAP scores. Now, let me ask because experience. sometimes those are process oriented as opposed yes. to outcomes oriented. Right. And so, to what degree did you see uh, emergency room visits decrease, uh, return to workforce, uh, longer lifespan, et cetera? We, we've, we don't have the indicator yet on longer lifespan. We're only a few years into this, right? So that's gonna be a lagging measure as we look at the different indicators. But we did see a decrease in emergency department utilization and increased use of primary care. Again, so not necessarily outcome measures, right? But it's a start. In Let me all ask them because I'm almost out of time. Yep. And I, I, specifically integrating SAMHSA grants in there, were you able to do that as well? We did. We, we flowed all of the SAMHSA block grant dollars to that organization. They were responsible for those as well. So again, a single accountable orga organization that had all those dollars braided in it. Gotcha. Uh, thank you all for your good work. I really appreciate it. And again, Dr. Durham, great to see your success. Thank you. Thank you.